Okay, now we're going to start our evaluation of the hip. Typically when we do observation of the hip, we're going to observe a few things, starting with just how he walks. So we're going to have you start walking across the floor, and then we'll have you walk back. And what we're doing is looking for rough symmetry, and we're going to pay particular attention to a few things. When he's starting with the leg that goes down in stance phase, and as he's swinging his other leg through, Come on back through. We want to make sure that he's able to pick up his contralateral hip so it comes up as the foot is going down. The contralateral hip that's swinging should elevate slightly so that the foot doesn't catch the ground as he's walking through. So I start by looking at the hips. Then I'll look down at the knees and make sure that his knees are bending and that he's absorbing some of the impact as he's walking across the floor. Come on back across. So he has a fairly normal pattern in terms of how his knees are moving. Then the last thing I'm going to look at is down at his feet and his ankles. And here I want you to pay attention particularly to as his heel strikes the ground, that his foot kind of come down, comes down slowly and accommodates the surface of the ground. It's not slapping, doing what we call a foot drop or a foot slap, where you'll hear kind of a, if he's walking on a tile floor, not as much on the carpeting. But here we can just see that his foot comes down slowly as opposed to slapping onto the floor as he's walking back and forth. So a fairly normal gait pattern in this case. Other issues that we would want to be concerned about just are the length of his stride, how wide his gait base would be, whether or not there was some stumbling or stuttering, anything that would look at all asymmetric or uh, abnormal from other perspectives. But his gait looks pretty normal. The next thing we're going to look at is just how things are lined up. So I'll usually come behind them. And this is often done in conjunction with the back exam, but as we talk about the hips in particular, we're going to kind of look at a few structures. We're going to look for symmetry of kind of his anterior iliac spine. So I'm going to find it with my fingers and feel that it's about the same height on both sides. And I'm also going to find where the greater trochanters are. And again, feel for them being roughly symmetric in terms of their height. So we'll look at those structures, and then we're going to actually feel and palpate them more deeply to see if they're tender. So I'm out here on the bump that we can feel at the outside of the hip. It's pretty easy to feel on, on most folks. And we feel for just areas of tenderness. And it's the same around this anterior superior iliac spine. OK, next we're going to assess for hip range of motion. So our patient's good enough to lie back for us. And we'll start just by assessing hip flexion. Now, for hip flexion, I'm just going to simply bring his knee up towards his chest and see how far he can move comfortably. I'm going to come back a little bit, and with the knee flexed at about 90 degrees, now I'm going to check for external rotation and internal rotation. Normally, there's a little bit more range of external rotation than internal rotation. And we're both going to assess for range. And again, any degree of discomfort with this range of motion that we're doing. We'll want to compare from one side to the other side so that we can assess for asymmetry. And again, kind of getting a sense for whether it's painful on one side or the other or both sides. Okay, so he's pretty good with internal and external rotation. We're also going to assess our abduction, so simply bringing the leg out away from the trunk. Abduction, one side and the other side. And then we'll check for crossed a deduction, just trying to bring the leg across on one side, and then the other side. Good. OK, now we're going to assess for his hip strength. So first we're going to test for his hip flexor strength. So I'll have you bring this leg up in the air. Don't let me push down. And we'll have you do it on this side as well. Don't let me push down. Good. All right. Nice and strong. You really got to crank on these. These are good, strong muscles. Now we're going to have you roll on your side towards the wall. And we're going to assess. I'm going to have him with his pelvis just about straight up and down, perpendicular to the table, and hold this leg up in the air. And don't let me push down. Testing his hip AB ductors. And now I'll have you actually pull your leg down back towards the table. And there's his AD ductor. Now I'll have you go ahead and roll onto your tummy. I'm going to bend his knee for him, bring his leg up a little bit, and have him hold up 
And don't let me push down. That's his hip extensor strength. We'll do that on the other side. Go ahead and relax. I'm going to have him bend, stretch up. Don't let me push down. There you go. Good. By having him bend his knee and me bringing it up, I think we can limit the amount of cramping that he might otherwise get if he was trying to hold his leg out straight. So it seems to be a little easier to do in that fashion. Now roll on your side towards me. Again, with the pelvis kind of perpendicular, we're going to have you hold this leg up and don't let me push down. Good. And now you kind of pull your leg back down. All right, good. Okay.